I love these stories. Get this, one of the most famous openings in music history came from the drummer playing a mistake. He was accidentally playing on the upbeat, and when he realized his mistake, he was actually about to change course when all of a sudden everyone else started playing on top of his mistake, and then the singer stepped up to the mic and uh, whispered a random phrase, and a 70s classic was born. We get the story of this classic from a founding member, actually the drummer. When this song, whenever it comes up on the radio, we all turn it up to 11 and just jam out. Best heard when cruising down the freeway, of course. The cool laid back hit from 1975. The story's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you ever got in trouble for recording hours of music videos over the top of your mom or dad's VHS recordable tapes, you're gonna dig this channel. Subscribe below right now to be a part of our community. And then make sure to click the bell so that you never miss out on the stories of the classics from the legends. Uh, was I the only one that got in trouble for that? I remember recording Friday night videos over top of uh, my mom's weekly taping of, of Dynasty. Or was it Knott's Lanny? I don't remember. <laughs> Tonight on Friday Night Videos. We're having a Revelations Marathon here. It's time for another episode of our series, Revelations. Today we're going to go behind the classic rock radio staple and number one R&B song and top 10 Billboard hit, Lowrider. All my friends know the Lowrider. The crossover hit, if there ever was one. War is definitely one of the most underappreciated bands of their time. And they were a virtual hit machine throughout the decade. Now, Lowrider was written by famed producer Jerry Goldstein uh, with its, its driving bass line by B.B. Dickerson. Duh, is a little higher. Its iconic alto saxophone riff by Charles Miller, who also provides the lead vocal. The song starts off with its ever familiar cowbell beat by Harold Ray Brown. So the band War was a funk rock and soul revival that defined the 70s. Originally known as Eric Burden and War, the band that Eric Burden was in after the Animals, who had the memorable hit Spill the Wine. War was a fierce fusion of R&B, rock, Latin, and funk styles that made them a force to be reckoned with. The band went beyond racial and cultural barriers with multi-ethnic combinations that breathed new life into radio. They had so many classic songs, including their masterpiece, number one LP, The World is a Ghetto, and that came out in 1972. They had the, the Cisco Kid along with the title track. Awarded the best-selling album of the year by Billboard magazine. It all happened very magically, as you're going to hear in this exclusive interview coming up. Lowrider isn't just a, a song for many. It's, it's a lifestyle. I was really fortunate to discuss this song at length with, uh, like I said, war founding member and original drummer Harold Ray Brown. What follows is a wonderful insight of this classic song, you're gonna love this, he's so cool. As we get into this interview, I do wanna thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the brand of frame uh, that I always wear. Speaking of lifestyle, Zenny Eyewear can bring some style to your life with glasses that go beyond your typical offering at the optometrist's office. They have elegant colors and distinct styles and you can design your own with amazing features. Check it out today at zenny.com. Here's the story of Lowrider with Harold Ray Brown. Let's talk about Lowrider because oh that, that one oh yeah well, that's, that's my big other. brother Charles Miller. Tell me how that came together because that's hot rod and classic. I mean, it's oh. one of those songs that gets you ready. If you have a big event, you listen to that. You're getting in the mood. Well, I say there. Lowriders were the first recyclers in America because myself, uh, when I started cruising 
you know, trying to get those breaks in the 60s. Yeah. I had a 53 Dodge. And what we used to do back in the day, we would take the springs off and I'd get a torch and we'd cut off about two of them and it would drop us slow. <laughs> <laughs> and we hit the tracks and we'd go, poof. <laughs> yeah. And the police <laughs> would do this. They used to take a caliper, they would take you know, Lucky Strikes, the small pack, and they would take it and slide it up under the car. And if it didn't clear, and then they measured from our tire, from the rubber, from the ground up to the rim. Oh yeah. And if it didn't go, they'd give you a ticket. So that's how it was. And then Charles, he got into it really deep. He went and got classic old cars and stuff. And when we would go traveling, we were just like lowriders. Yeah. And, it, and it's a thing out of Southern California, like East LA, Compton, you know, uh, uh, Long Beach. It was just our thing. And what we would do when I said we were recyclers, we wanted us a new fender, a new uh, a windshield or something. We would simply go into the wrecking yards and we'd get old parts and rebuild our cars. And the lowriders still do this. Yeah. So one day we were in the studio and this is where I learned a valuable lesson recording. It was a mistake that I was playing on yeah. the drums. I was on the upbeat, I'm going, uh, 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 I wanted, because most people want even now, they go, uh, 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 on time. It was yeah. like a sky. And I was in the studio. I was going, uh, uh, oh no. Oh, I'm on the upbeat. Well, don't panic, just leave it there. And stop being an accident. It became intentional. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing I know with uh, uh, B.B., Morris Dickerson, he started on his bass. Boom, 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 boom. Huh. And then and Lonnie Jordan with this, you know, and then Howard on the up. And it then all the cowbell. Yeah, well, but see, yeah, we, yeah, we did that. See. But then it was all an act because the very first parts were Jerry Goldstein's editing scene. That goes back to the key. We had the right people. Nobody was greater or lesser than the other person. Mm -hmm. At that moment, Chris Huston, who was a sound engineer, he used to sit there and just let the tape run. And all of a sudden, Charles just got up there in the mic and says, the low rider. The low rider is the one to meet you. That was right there. <laughs> he just said, oh, wait, 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 I'm going to go back. I'm gonna re it was, you know, he was right there. That energy was in that moment. See, that's why we have to be connected in the spirit. Spiritually connected as brothers and sisters. Because it wouldn't happen. Because if anybody came in there and they weren't connected, they wouldn't have been in the flow. And it's like feng shui, we have to be in the flow. And That's why it's important even for musicians. A lot of musicians these days, because of technology and they're away from each other, they'll email something. But it's greater to be in a room together because like you <laughs> lost that love and feeling. You know, I was talking you know, to the writers exactly. of that. They were the energy off of each other. Everything. And they were coming up with cool things. And That's what was with, with low -riding. Like What we used to do, we'd be rehearsing. Right down there, you know, in Hollywood, right there, 74 7 studio instrument, you know, right there. We would, after we finished, or we were rehearsing down there on Hill Street, Lemon. I drove by there the other day in the little garages and stuff. After we finished, hey, instead of just busting up, running back to my big house, or, well, you know, I gotta go to, I got another appointment, like we were talking about time, we would all go to a movie together and then we'd get ideas. Magic. Yeah, the we'd magic go and hang out, we'd see a movie, and we'd say, hey, yeah. you know, that's a great idea. Yeah. Maybe we ought to take this. Like city, country, city, or different things. It's interesting, a lot of people thought that take a little trip. Take a little trip, take a little trip to me. Rides a little higher, assumed it as a drug reference. The low rider is a little higher. That wasn't no, a drug reference. No, because see, we're Southern California. If you look at our very first video that we shot on it, it was shot around here, and when it, and even like all day music. All day, all day, all day. Right low, now with all the window. You need it today at 100 degrees, but that you that's the vibe you get if you're cruising along Long Beach. Yep. Going down past Huntington Beach, 
or yeah. if you're going to Malibu, if you're cruising through just, you know, Crenshaw or Whittier Boulevard, the palm trees blowing, we get the wind. In fact, one time when you were cruising along, you guys were able to warn people about a fire. I remember reading that story I checked out, yeah, Charles Miller and I, and I'm just by there. I, 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 I give God praise. I'm still in the same neighborhood. I love it because <laughs> I get all this energy. I'm going down there and one day, man, Charles is hanging and we cut off there on Salt Lake, Hill Street, right around there. And him and I was going down the side street towards the tracks. I got a storage unit right there by where I keep all our band, you know, taxes yeah. and all that. <laughs> we looked and there was a fire going on right up under in the car and the people living up over, they didn't even know. Charles and I ran out and him and I started hitting on the doors, throwing barrels against the doors and stuff, yeah. kicking it in. See, that's why we have to be connected because we was in the right places, the right moment, and that's what made our music. And you were cruising the low rider. That's right, we were cruising the low rider. <laughs> that's why I know the side streets. Low rider, street, yeah. That's how I got here. <laughs> yeah. Well, the covers too, Santana yeah. did a cover of it. Oh, yeah. Did you ever hear that? Well, Santana and I, uh, a lot of the rhythms I learned, see, he grew up in Tijuana. And about the same time he grew up in Tijuana, I was cruising. Because my mother, I don't gamble. I mean, yeah. I gamble on me, but I don't do horse races. I don't play casinos. I don't have that sickness. I don't even play the scratch cards. <laughs> I was born March 17th. I'm lucky. So I used to slip over. My mother and them with her friends, they'd go down and go to dog races in Tijuana. I would go there and I'd go in and out of the strip clubs. Because that's where I heard that. King, ka kong, king, ki, ka, ka, king. So when I grew up in South Los Angeles and playing all these different pl places, all the shake dancers like for me to play behind them. Because I had that key, cock, and they go, key, cock, con, key, key, cock, key, cock, yeah. all through Santa Barbara and stuff. So later on, I found out, whoa, him and I had that parallel thing. That's why I got yeah. that thinking. And then when I lived in New Orleans for quite a while at the Singer Theater, big shout out to a lot of my homeboys there in New Orleans, <laughs> yeah, all the Neville brothers, you know, and Sun, Bruce Sunpine, all of them, you know. Al Duro, my little old green truck. Oh, wow. Al Duro cruising that with me. Hello. <laughs> Gladys Knight. Yeah. I'd be on the side of the stage because I worked as a stagehand for a while. I left my mansion vacant for a whole year and moved to New Orleans, lived in the project. And nobody knew who I was. I just walked the street. And it was uh, a Red Hot Chili Peppers. We was doing a show and I was over on the ground taping down all they called me to, you know, I, clean fag. But anyway, I'm taping all the stuff down. And then old flea. That's Harold Brown over there. He knew us before we got started. <laughs> they were used to rehearse at 74, 17 sunset. Wow. And Gladys Knight would be on the side, she'd be we're doing arms are too long to box, too short to box for God. I'd be on the side of the stage because I had Work my way up to house to half house and all that. She'd run over to the side of the stage and grab my glass off the stage, off my face and run over to the side. <laughs> so that was really good because I have a saying. Big shout out to all you stage hands. My saying is, if it wasn't for the stage hands, we'd be all garage bands. <laughs> That's right. Well, with Lowrider, you know, <laughs> Carlos Santana, George Clinton, Corn. Oh, yeah. You know, Peter Cetera, Fish. <laughs> uh, the samples, though, the Beastie Boys sampled on Slow Oh, yeah. One that they sample a lot, a lot of the, you know, from around South Los Angeles and stuff. Ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom. Listen to my heartbeat is beating my fucking. Bring in the bass and play it fucking. Ba doom, doom, doom. That's me singing it. And that was the first one that, you know, it's not the first rap because historically speaking, a lot of old blues players, they used to do the dozens. Yeah. And they'd be in an old bar and they would just start <laughs> playing the old blues and start talking and rapping. They were our first rappers. And so we were setting up one time and the drummer was rare earth. Yeah. Like, I heard him singing. I said, well, if he can sing and play drums, I can too. And we was in the studio and I had a couple of, you know, drinks or whatever. And we just started off, boom, 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 boom. And I just started, and I just started rapping it down. Wow. And so when I got to sheet music, it stretches maybe about five pages. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Well, with Lowrider, <laughs> that part in Gone in 60 Seconds, that yeah. was probably pretty cool. Donnie, Lowrider. Oh, that is. That? I love it, yeah. Okay, let's run. Peach and Chong, it was used in that, up in smoke. Is a little higher. George Lowe has used it. My friends, the low rider. Oh, George his? Lopez, him and I hung out uh, over in Studio City. Yeah, yeah. George Lopez and uh, Cheech Marion. We hung out with him not long ago. He was up in Vancouver. It was mentioned in that 70s show. I mean, it was such a huge song in the 70s and still such a huge song. It was using Grand Theft Auto, the video game, San Andreas and Family Guy. Hey, 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 girls. Anyone want to make the Kessel run? Yeah, but see, that's the thing, you know, uh, when you go in, I got to say, we've been blessed. All the original members of war, we've been blessed. When I say original members, I'm talking about Howard E. Scott, Lee Oscar Levington. I'm talking about Morris B.B. Dickerson. I'm talking about Charles W. Miller, uh, Sylvester Papa D. Allen. Did I count everybody? Missing anybody? Oh, me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, there have been so many cool covers of Lowrider over the years. Very cool. Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about this feel good classic of 1975. What are your memories of this song? What's your experience with it? First time you heard it. I remember when it come on, my dad had turned it all the way up and we would crew. It was just so much fun. Make sure that you share some of those insights, uh, those memories with us below. If you like this channel, if you like this video, we would love to have you subscribe below to be a part of our community going forward. It's all about keeping the music alive. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe out there.